मैं पहले भी बोल चुका हूं कि फिजिक्स एज अ सब्जेक्ट इज वेरी अनप्रेडिक्टेबल मैकेनिक्स इज द सिंगल मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट चैप्टर दैट यू हैव टू डू फोकस ऑन व्हाट इज गिवन टू यू इन द क्वेश्चन एंगलोमेंट ऑफ द बुलेट बिफोर द कोलिजन शुड बी इक्वल टू एंगलोमेंट ऑफ द डोर प्लस बुलेट सिस्टम आफ्टर द कोलिजन मेक अ स्पेशल नोट ऑफ Those values that are not given the question. कोई भी सपना साकार करने के लिए सबसे जरूरी है सही कोच का होना चुनिए साई एस्ट्रा और करे अपने आई ए टी एन नेस्ट का सपना साकार डाउनलोड दिया नाउ हेलो जनता अगर आप हमें सोशल मीडिया पे फॉलो करते हो तो आपको पता होगा कि आईआईटी और नेस्ट के क्रैश कोर्सेस शुरू हो चुके हैं एंड एवरीवन प्रिपरेशन इज इन फुल स्वे तो इस वीडियो में हम जानेंगे कि इस साल आईआईटी और नेस्ट के लिए क्या क्या इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स हैं और जिनको प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व करने में दिक्कत होती है उनके लिए कुछ जनरल प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग टैक्टिक्स भी हम देखेंगे तो चलो शुरू करते हैं सबसे पहले एग्जाम के बारे में मैं पहले भी बोल चुका हूं कि फिजिक्स एज अ सब्जेक्ट इज वेरी अनप्रेडिक्टेबल तुम्हारा सिलेबस ही इतना वास्ट है कि कौन से टॉपिक को किस तरह से एक्सप्लॉयट करके उससे कौन से क्वेश्चंस बन सकते हैं ये कोई भी नहीं प्रेडिक्ट कर सकता तुम सारे के सारे प्रीवियस इयर्स क्वेश्चन पेपर ले सकते हो उस टॉपिक्स में डिवाइड कर सकते हो और उनमें कोई पैटर्न या फिर कोई ट्रेंड ढूंढ सकते हो तुम ढूंढते ही रह जाओगे यू वोट फाइंड एनी मीनिंगफुल बिकॉज टॉपिक्स आर सो वेल डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड एंड देर इज सो मच इंटरमिक्सिंग ऑफ टॉपिक्स दैट You can never predict what kind of questions will come from what kind of topics. But हम एक comment कर सकते हैं questions के distribution के बारे में with respect to calculations versus concept applications. As you can see from this distribution, most of the questions will be well balanced between concept application and calculations. But you can expect a lot of questions from slightly more heavy concepts with easy calculations and less questions from tough calculations and light concept applications once again the questions will be very uniformly distributed between the topics and two or more topics will be combined to form most of the questions in your exam isliye jo bhi hum important topics dekhne wale hai if you are very well versed in them but not in the other topics then you can only expect to have at most half of the questions to be easy for you if you want to score well in physics then you have to be good in every single chapter every single topic if you only do the important topics then you cannot expect to solve more than half of the paper correctly let's see what the important topics are so here are the important topics that you have to be good in arranged in descending order these topics not only do appear the most frequently in questions but also require a lot of attention and study mechanics is the single most important chapter that you have to do not only because it has a lot of potential to frame good questions but it can also be combined with almost any other topic in your syllabus to form interesting systems i have bunched some topics together because they are so similar to each other that more often than not you can find combined questions from pairs of topics one very interesting point to note is that there are a lot of derivations and mathematical treatments emitted from magnetism and emi in the rationalized syllabus but in almost all of them the final results and the theory parts are included so you can expect a lot of conceptual questions from magnetism and electromagnetic induction so you have to be good in these topics but once again i would say that you revise your entire syllabus very nicely because if you only revise these topics then you can expect at most half of the paper to be easy now let us see how to solve problems in physics of course every single problem is unique and there is no one magic technique that will make you solve all problems but you can follow this general five step plan and more often than not you can streamline your problem solving process with this first of all read the problem carefully and identify what topics the problem wants you to think about once you've done that then construct and analyze the system that is given to you if the diagram is given then you can draw the free body diagram of the system see where the forces are acting see what forces are acting what kind of forces will be balanced 
if there is something like an inclined plane in your system then see what coordinate system you can use to make your problem easy imagine your system the different parts how they can behave see what values are given in your questions and make a special note of those values that are not given in the question because more often than not those are what is asked now once you know what has been given and what is not you need to bridge the gap between the known and the unknown here you write all the relevant equations from the topics that you identified see if you can apply for example work energy theorem or conservation of momentum conservation of charges what not all of this will help you in mathematically writing whatever is required in the question once you've done that then see if there are any shortcuts that you can find in the question for example if the question has any symmetry or if you have been asked the maximum or the minimum values then you can invoke some special techniques which of course you will develop from experience once you have the answer always and always verify if your calculations are correct rewind the calculations and see if you've made any mathematical mistakes or any logical fallacies that you used if the question is asking you for example maximum velocity then manually put the value of velocity to be greater than that and see if the system still makes sense all of these will help you prevent any silly mistakes and once you get the answer key you won't feel bad about missing one single point that cost you a lot in your exam let us now apply this plan to some interesting problems this problem talks about a door being hit with a bullet first step identify the topic it's from rotational mechanics and since the bullet gets embedded into the door you know that a perfectly inelastic collision is happening so you will have to balance the angular momentum about the hinge somewhere in the problem second step is construct the system your system has a vertical axis and there is a door that rotates about it a bullet hits it at some distance x from the hinge hence it is useful to draw the top view of the system you can draw this like this with this being the axis a door that you can represent as a rod and the bullet hits it at some distance from the center since you know that you have to conserve angular momentum angular moment of the bullet before the collision should be equal to angular moment of the object door plus bullet system after the collision over here since the bullet gets embedded you have to consider the moment of inertia of the door plus moment of inertia of the bullet after the collision and multiply it with the angular velocity and initially since the bullet hits the door perpendicular to the axis or perpendicular of the axis of the door then initial angular momentum is simply m into v to r and hence just by solving this one equation you will get a relationship between final angular velocity and the initial distance at which the bullet hits the door you have thus bridged the unknown with the known now after that you have to of course carry out all the calculations that you should do yourself and then you can verify whether your answer is correct or not once you've done that mark the correct answer and move on to the next question now this was an example of a question in which the concept was very straight forward but the calculation might be a little difficult this is another question that gets asked to me very often as a doubt and you have been given two spheres of some mass and a small object being projected towards the other object now the question says that it is fired first with a minimum speed such that it just reaches the other sphere which of course you have to find how will you find that you know that since the system is symmetric then the small object just has to reach the center of the two spheres and then gravitational field will carry itself the rest of the distance so apply work energy theorem between these two points and 
you will get the minimum speed with which the object must be thrown once you get that then the question asks that if the object is thrown with twice the minimum speed then you have to find out at a distance x from the center what will be the velocity again you will find this by applying work ng theorem from this point to this point and solving the equation will give you the answer over here you have to keep in mind that gravitational force acts over here due to the sphere a and over here due to the sphere a so you have to be careful while writing the gravitational potential energy because sign matters a lot in this question and you can make mistakes just by missing one plus sign or one minus sign hence verifying the answer and spotting your mistakes is very important in this question now one more thing i would like to highlight is that if at any point in the exam you find yourself overthinking about the question just pondering over the possibilities not going anywhere then you are making some very big mistake in your considerations for example in this problem you have been given a very large tank filled with water and a glass bottle be dipped into it now initially you might think that okay since water is given then it has to do with something about fluid dynamics but in applying any concept of fluid dynamics in this question you would require at least the cross section area of the bottle or the tank or the total height of the tank or something like that but nothing is given all you've been given is that once the bottle reaches the bottom 3/5 of its volume gets filled with water now if some information is omitted from the question or in this case if a lot of information is omitted from this question that is a sign that the question does not want you to think about whatever concept requires that point of information so discard whatever you have been thinking till now and focus on what is actually given that is neglecting any change in temperature since temperature is remaining constant in your system you have to know that okay there is some isothermal process taking place now let us draw the system large water tank and a glass bottle is inverted into it after reaching the bottom you know that 3/5 of its volume gets filled with water and since temperature does not change then you need to only apply the condition for isothermal compression taking air as a system instead of water your problem gets reduced to a simple thermodynamic problem of a cylinder with a gas and a piston at one end you know the pressure at this point atmospheric pressure you know the pressure at the bottom p not plus rho g h apply the condition p1 v1 is equal to p2 v2 and the problem is done now we started thinking that okay the problem must be fluid dynamics problem but since no information is given relevant to that we discarded and looked for other information and realized that it is actually a problem of thermodynamics and combined with properties of matter nothing to do with fluid dynamics at all this way you should not get distracted by some small bits and pieces that you know but focus on what is given to you in the question and stick to only the concepts that can be applied with the information that is given to you now we could solve or at least approach all of these problems very quickly because we had all the concepts in our fingertips we knew every chapter through and through and we also had enough experience that is we were not limited by our ability to write and put our thoughts on paper agar tumko sare ke sare concepts apne finger tips pe hai aur likhne ki bhi practice hai to तुम्हारे पास अगर कोई भी प्रॉब्लम आ जाए तो बस हैरी पॉटर की तरह छू मंतर करके दो मिनट में तुम उसको सॉल्व कर दोगे और ये चीज डेवलप होती है ओनली बाय प्रैक्टिस 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 एंड प्रैक्टिस इसीलिए एग्जाम आने तक चाहे कुछ भी हो जाए सुनामी आ जाए भूकंप आ जाए या वर्ल्ड वॉर थ्री चालू हो जाए तुम्हें अपनी प्रैक्टिस नहीं रोकनी चाहिए 
आई होप कि इस वीडियो से तुम्हें एग्जाम के बारे में एक चीज तो क्लियर हो गई होगी कि तुम्हें सिर्फ और सिर्फ प्रैक्टिस करनी है स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम नाउ अंटिल योर एग्जाम और तुम्हारी प्रैक्टिस को इजी बनाने के लिए उसको और इफेक्टिव बनाने के लिए आई होप तुमने इस वीडियो से कुछ इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स सीखे